Hi, I'm Khadija and I'm here at Aintree Racecourse talking to the clerk of the course about the preparation and everything that goes into the Grand National. Hi Suleika, thank you so much for having me here at Aintree. It's lovely to meet you. I'm really excited to learn more about what goes into the prep before the Grand National. I'm quite interested to see what the irrigation and the drainage system looks like. So underneath the track is a network of drainage which allows the water to move through the soil into the drainage system and away from the course. But equally, when it gets too dry, we want to be able to put water on the track to ease the ground to make it safe for racing. So we're at Fence 2. Tell me more about the construction of these amazing jumps. So what you can see, we've got the team working here on Fence number 2. You've got the tow board. It's a very, very hard wearing timber. What that does, as you'll know from your riding, horses it really helps them to have a ground line so they can see where the base of the fence is. The next thing up you've got is the guardrail. Again it also gets called the sighting rail to help the horse see the shape of the fence and to see the depth of the fence and we fill that in with birch and that provides a soft core and then what we have at the back is the newer part of the fence and it's a plastic container that sits to the height of the guardrail and then above that is fake plastic birch. We then lace the spruce into that false birch that creates a base layer and then the rest of the spruce is then laced on top. So gradually, layer by layer, the team build up the fence to the height it needs to be. So what we've created is something that is more forgiving, so that if a horse does make a mistake, the aim is that it slows the horse down. They're not rewarded for jumping poorly, but they're also not severely punished. And we've seen, since these have changed, a reduction in fallers in the Grand National by a considerable percentage. We are at Breaches Brook. It clearly looks different to the other jumps. Tell me more about what defines this jump. This is one of the iconic fences in the Grand National and the big thing about it is the drop on the landing side. There's a few things that have been altered with this over the past few years just to make it safer. One of the big things that was done was the landing was actually slightly levelled. What happens beyond that landing is what's changed and as a result it makes it a safer fence because the horses are landing and they've got consistent ground to then gallop away from the fence on. The other thing we've done is the brook has actually been filled in. Can anyone that normally jumps over a few fences ride at the Grand National? No. <laughs> <laughs> we have quite strict criteria in terms of both jockeys and also the horses. One of the restrictions we have is that jockeys must have ridden not less than 15 winners in their career and at least 10 of those have to be over chase fences. We also insist that any jockeys who have ridden less than twice over the Grand National fences at a Grand National Festival have to do a course walk with a jockey coach the morning of racing. So tell me more about this shoe. What is this built for? So this is one of um, three catching pens that we have around the course and it's very simply to catch loose horses. Generally, loose horses either jump the fence with the field and carry on, but sometimes they look at the fence and they haven't got a jockey on their back and they think, actually, I don't need to jump that. So we have these catching pens. We have teams of horse catchers based at each fence. So what will happen is the horse follows the chute down. It'll go into that winged area. The guys will pull the door across and they'll catch the horse. It keeps the race safer, keeps the horses safer, because having loose horses running around isn't ideal. And then all the horses are, are brought back to the stables for their stable staff. Generally at the Grand National, we have by Saturday about 200 people on the course looking after the race itself. So the Grand staff that you met earlier, they become fence attendants. So they are at each fence. If we need to bypass, if we need to catch loose horses, anything like that, they'll do that. We also have the horse catching team whose job is catching horses. We then also have ground staff mobile and vehicles who carry water, they carry extra head collars, um, anything that we might need to help a horse. We also have five horse ambulances on course, so if a horse is injured, we can get them safely into a horse ambulance and back to the stables to be treated by the vets. And we also have the vets on course as well, <laughs> so we have nine vets around the course in vehicles. They'll cover two fences each, so you've got one vet to every two fences. Far more coverage than you will see on any race course anywhere else in the country on any given day. But obviously this race is unique and um, we, we make sure we're, we're fully resourced to cover the race to win his second Round Ox Health Grand National. It's been eye-opening learning more about what goes on here at Aintree in preparation for the Grand National. I can't believe how much effort goes into making the Grand National as safe and successful as possible.